Okay, guys, I thought it might be a good idea for us to do this problem together to make sure that you're getting the centripetal acceleration and centripetal force stuff. Um, so if I was going to draw a picture of this coin on a record player, uh, it would have some center of a circle. Here's the coin, and then it goes in a circle, and there's going to be some radius. We can call that R. And as the coin moves in a circle, it will have a linear velocity, V, and a acceleration pointed towards the center that is changing the direction of the velocity. Remember, an acceleration is uh, a change in velocity with time. In this case, the velocity is just changing direction. There are two equations that we can use to get the centripetal acceleration. One is we take v, square it, and divide it by the radius of the circle. Or if you remember, um, we can take our linear to rotational motion equations and if we multiply theta, omega, or alpha by r, we'll, we'll get the linear equation. Um, so what we can do is we can take this equation for v, and we can plug it in. So that what we get for the centripetal acceleration is omega times r squared over r, which is going to be omega squared times r squared over r. Two of those r's will cancel, and you would get omega squared times r. This was from the rotational motion unit where you might have forgotten this. So in any case, we have two equations for centripetal acceleration. One is v squared over r, and the other is omega squared times r. Either of those will give you the centripetal acceleration. To find the centripetal force, you just do the mass times the centripetal acceleration, and you can use either of those equations to get that. Okay, so in this problem, part A, it asks you what is the direction, um, and it should be pointed towards the center. Center directed, that is the direction of the centripetal force, because it means center directed. Okay, so for B, find the magnitude of the acceleration when the coin is placed at those different um, radii. First of all, you would need to convert those different radiuses into meters instead of centimeters. So like, I can call this R1, and it would be 0 0.05 meters, because there are 100 centimeters in a meter, and then 0.1 meters, call this R3, 0.15 meters. Okay, then the next thing that you would need to do is take this 33.3 .3 and make it your angular velocity because it's telling you about how the object spins with time. Um, and this is in revolutions per one minute. So remember, you would need to factor label what the number of revolutions, right? In one revolution, there are two pi radians. And then multiply that by, in one minute, there are 60 seconds. So you get rid of the 60. Okay, so 33.3 .3 repeating times 2 pi um, divided by 60 is going to give you, we'll just round it to 3.5 radians per second. Okay, so the reason why you want to use omega for your angular velocity um, is because part B is asking you to find the accelerations, and you can use this equation to find them. So you would say, all right, AC1 is going to be 3.5 radians per second, that whole thing squared, times R1, 0.05 meters. The centripetal acceleration for two, 3.5 radians per second, the whole thing squared, times 0.1 meters. And I think you get the pattern. Okay, 0.15 meters. Okay, so when you put those in your calculator, you should get, that looks like point six one two five and this would be uh, meters per second squared the radians just kind of go away and then 1.225 meters per second squared and 1.8375 oh god that's so many numbers let's just make that I don't know 
93. Sure, why not? We're using that many decimals. Meters per second squared. Okay, so those are the accelerations for those different um, parts. Part C wants you to recognize that the force of friction um, that is causing this, it's kind of like, it's almost like a car on a road. Um, it would be friction because if the record were covered in oil or something slippery, then the penny would not go in a circle. It would just slide off. So you need friction. So friction is the centripetal force. And D is asking you to say which of the three radii would the coin be most likely to fly off the turntable. Um, and hopefully you saw that the um, most likely to fly off is going to be the one where you are further away. And that's because you have a higher centripetal acceleration, which means you would need more. Here, I'll write it like this you would need more centripetal force. Um, and because of that, you would need more friction at that higher centripetal acceleration. So the place where you need the most friction is gonna be the place where you're least likely to slip because the record and the penny can only have so much friction. Okay, hopefully this reminded you about how to use this equation to get centripetal accelerations. You might have forgotten, um, and I don't think I put that in the instructional video that I gave you before. So I wanted to make sure to give you something to walk you through this. Hopefully this helps you with the problems that you're working on where you need to find a centripetal force, but you only have omega. You can find the centripetal force by doing mass times omega squared times r. In the same way that you can find the centripetal force by doing mass times velocity squared over r. So those are two different centripetal force equations you can use. Okay, good luck guys.